So I'm back in front of the camera again. I know it's been a while, but you know what that means. It's time for another Halloween Horror Nights themed video. And I thought it's a new year. HHN 32 spec season announcement season is upon us. And I thought I'd start off this sort of spec season by talking about the only thing that's even somewhat easy to predict when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights. That is the IPs for this year. Last year was not really super heavy on IPs. So I think this year we're going to have some big hitters and I compiled a little list of some of the IPs that I think are going to come this year and with each IP I'm going to be ranking one to five on how likely I think it is that this IP is actually going to make it to the event. I also want to specify before I start here that I have no insider information. I know nothing more than you do. Um, the only thing we really know about HHN32 is that Chucky is going to be there and I'll talk about Chucky a little bit uh, during this video but I don't know anything. This is just speculation. These are just my personal thoughts. So getting into it, the first on the list is the horror film that seems to have taken the world by storm in 2023. I'm talking about Blumhouse's Megan. Now, a lot of other people have talked about Megan appearing at Halloween Hornets, including Megan herself. So this one seems like a pretty sure shot, especially considering Blumhouse's continued partnership with Halloween Horror Nights, doing three uh, specific horrors of Blumhouse houses, and of course, having other IPs featured at uh, various aspects of the event, like The Purge, and also this movie has been really successful, tripling its production budget in opening weekend, and it's been greenlit for a sequel. So we know Megan is going to be around for quite a while. And we also know there's just a lot of general mainstream appeal with Megan, especially with younger uh, visitors, younger audiences. So I think that could lead to Megan being a really highly promoted IP at this year's event. Also in concept, Megan is pretty similar to Chucky, which is the only other known IP for this year as it's, they're both kind of killer dolls. So I think it would be kind of fun to play with both of those characters interacting with each other, especially because they both have a very self-referential meta uh, 21st century sort of humor style um, that I think will be really fun in advertising campaigns. Now, while Megan is enough to carry her own house, I don't see another Horrors of Blumhouse completely out of the question, with Megan being paired with a smaller Blumhouse release from either this year or previous years. Like how last year they put the bigger black phone with the smaller freaky. And like I said, they've been teasing this on both Halloween Hornet's end and Megan's end, so it seems like this one's really likely. I'm putting this one at 5 out of 5 on the likely meter. Now, while Megan and Blumhouse seem like a very likely return, I think another pretty likely return is the Universal Monsters property. Now, this is a good one that Universal likes to have in their back pocket. They own these characters, so they're not having to pay out any third parties, not having to sign any contracts. They have full creative control with what they can do with the monsters, and they've been treating the monsters almost as a sort of shared universe of houses, uh, which makes sense because the Universal Monsters franchise was essentially the first cinematic universe uh, since 2019. We had the Monsters House, we've had the Bride of Frankenstein Lives, and we've had Legends Collide last year, all very successful with Legends Collide specifically winning House of the Year last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just continue with Universal Monsters this year. But the question then becomes, what Universal Monsters films are we going to be looking at here? Now, there have been, I think, two uh, pretty prime monster movies that I think they could pull from for a Universal Monsters themed house. The first one being Creature from the Black Lagoon. We saw the creature a little bit in the 2019 house, and Gilman is one of the most popular Universal Monsters, I think, in looks. I, I think a lot of people can recognize Gilman, uh, can recognize that he's part of the whole Universal Monsters crew, and I think they could do something really cool, almost like a pseudo sequel to Depths of Fear with the sort of underwater theming plus some jungle theming. We haven't really gotten a jungle themed house in quite a while. So I think that could be a really fun house concept. I know a lot of people have been wanting a creature from the Black Lagoon house. So I think this could be the year that we finally get it. However, I've also heard talks about them doing Phantom of the Opera, which would be very interesting because Phantom is ending its Broadway run this year. And the movie was also featured in the 2019 Monsters House very briefly, but had some really impressive sets that I think they could really do well in a soundstage with a full soundstage uh, theme to Phantom of the Opera. You can kind of bring back that opera house, uh, gothic opera house setting, and also pull reference 
references from things like Puppet Theater, uh, for example. And while those properties aren't as big as some of the other monsters they've done, I think they're big enough that they could carry their own houses, especially if they do really dark, really interesting interpretations of them like they've been doing with the monsters in the past. I personally would be really excited for a Creature from the Black Lagoon house, although I wouldn't mind seeing a Phantom house either. I think both are really great uh, possibilities for highly themed, very scenic haunted houses that could also deliver on the scares because the Universal Monsters houses are known for being good with scares, especially Legend Collide. I think that one was definitely one of the scarier houses last year. And because of it being Universal, Universal Monsters, the track record, I'm giving it a four on the likely meter. Now this one is purely born out of Halloween Horror Nights Twitter, but I think there is a chance that The weekend could return to HHN 32. Now last year, Universal kind of threw fans a curveball when The weekend was rumored for months and then finally confirmed to be a part of the event. And while it wasn't perfect for everyone, I think a lot of people were surprised, including myself, on how fantastic that weekend house was and a lot of people would want to see it have a sequel now after hours the weekend album that the house was based on has a sequel in last year's dawn of m album so a lot of people have been speculating whether they're going to take that approach and use dawn fm as a basis for a sequel weekend house it wouldn't be too weird we have had back-to-back -back houses before specifically with another property i'm going to talk about on this list but this was one of those great grabber ips that br no not that grabber Grabber IPs in a way that it brings people in to the park from avenues that normally wouldn't visit Halloween Horror Nights, but may go for the first time and say, hey, this is actually pretty cool. I'm going to come back here and I want to come back every single year. It was great for event marketing. It was great for merchandise. So I think Universal would want to continue this if The weekend also wants to continue this. I think it would be really successful for both parties and uh, a good idea for both parties. I'm going to give this one probably a two and a half on the likely meter. I think it can go either way. Maybe last year was the only time they're ever going to do business uh, with each other. Maybe it was just the start for another house coming this year. Who knows? All right, next up, let's talk about the Evil Dead. Now, for those who don't know, Evil Dead was supposed to be featured at last year's event. It was all over speculation maps for both Orlando and Hollywood. It was everywhere. Everybody was speculating Evil Dead, Evil Dead, Evil Dead. Supposedly, they had already built the thing. And apparently, Apparently, Evil Dead, uh, Warner Brothers, they pulled out of that deal because of the movie Evil Dead Rise, the new film, being pushed back to this year. So, now that we're in 2023, Evil Dead Rise is set to come out in a couple months, and I think we could be getting the Evil Dead property at Halloween Hornets again. I think the franchise by itself is pretty popular, could do well with merchandise and marketing. A lot of people are familiar with Evil Dead and its many, many incarnations. And I think that also lends itself well to being a house. I know they've done Evil Dead houses in the past well, with the 2013 remake and the Ash vs. Evil Dead show, but there's never been a house dedicated to the original 1981 film, the classic, my favorite of the three, Evil Dead 2 and uh, Army of Darkness. They've never, never done a house for any of those. So I think the potential is there. You could do a comedy house with two and Army of Darkness. You can do a more uh, dark, scary house with the first Evil Dead. You can do a really gory house with Evil Dead Rise uh, to sort of tie it in. It can be a throwback IP. It could be a new IP. Honestly, the potential is really there for them to do whatever with Evil Dead. This is a bold prediction, but I think if Universal is going to move forward with Evil Dead this year, I think they might be waiting until that movie comes out, uh, maybe doing like a black phone situation where they announce the house around the time the movie releases. I think that would be a pretty solid plan um, for them to do and keep it kind of fresh. But yeah, that's just a prediction. But that being said, I think likely meter on this one, I'm going to go I'm gonna go 3.5 because I do think there is a chance, unless all the bridges were burned last year with them pulling out so quickly, them having to transform um, the 10th house Hellblock Horror real quick, I think this would be the chance to really bring Evil Dead to this event and really do it right. Speaking of another IP that was supposed to be a last year's event, or rumored to be a last year's event, I guess. One that I really think they could do well, they could use at this event as a heavy hitter, as one of the heavy hitters. I'm talking about Stranger Things. I know many people were talking about it 
last year because last year was the release of Stranger Things 4. You know, you thought, hey, Stranger Things 4, really popular, definitely the most popular of the four seasons so far. So naturally, it should have a House of Halloween Horror Nights. I mean, they've done it in 2018 for season one, 2019 for season two and three. I think season four is ripe uh, with stuff to do a really scary house. It's definitely the scariest of the four seasons. I think this is really uh, something that I think Universal needs to jump on this year um, before Stranger Things 5 sort of takes over. It would be definitely another grabber IP like The Weeknd. Um, so I think it would be really fun um, to have Stranger Things this year, regardless of what sort of event theme they're going with, because that's something I've kind of left out of all of these picks is like an overall event theme. I know some people have tried to connect the dots. For, for this, I'm just more going with general IPs that I think they could use regardless. It's a similar situation with The Weeknd and Evil Dead. If Netflix and Universal still want to work together because this isn't a third party Netflix, they did have a good relationship. They did Stranger Things for two years and then they did Haunting of Hill House. Um, I know a lot of people were talking about Fear Street also. Um, so if Netflix and, and Universal still want to do Horror Nights collaboration, um, I think Stranger Things 4, even a year later, I think it's still relevant enough where people will want to come and visit and see those moments played out in real time. For likely meter on Stranger Things, I'm gonna go with three. I think it's it's fairly likely. I'm not sure if it's in that four or five yet because it is has been a year, has been some time since Stranger Things 4, but I think three is the solid number for that one. Now, this one I've only seen on a few people's radars and definitely is catering more to the horror fans. I think there is a chance this year that Terrifier could be making its way to the event. Well, I feel like Terrifier 2 was one of the standout horror films of last year. Of course, you had films like the A24, X, and Pearl. You had Scream, you had The Black Phone, Halloween. You know, you had these bigger titles a lot of people were talking about, but I feel like this one was the standout original horror film from last year. Art the Clown, you know, this movie made ridiculous money for an indie film. I've seen merchandise in, in Walmart, in Hot Topic, uh, Best Buy. I've seen Terrifier in places outside of like niche horror circles. So I feel like Terrifier and Art the Clown and any kind of mix of those two um, could be something that we could see at Halloween Horror Nights. So I think it could be really fun. It could be really gory. Um, Terrifier is known for being over the top with gore, which is also similar to how Halloween Horror Nights does things. And you could pull stuff from Terrifier 1, Terrifier 2, All Hallows Eve, any of the Art the Clown appearances. You could really just throw all the Art the Clown anywhere um, and sort of have some ridiculous scenarios where he's killing people in really grotesque ways and I think it would be a fun time. I'm going likely meter on this one, probably like a two. I don't know if this one's as likely as the other. I would love to see it, but I don't know if this one's as likely as the others. I think this year, right now, Art the Clown is at peak relevance, so I think Terrifier 2 this year will be a really good time to uh, incorporate that IP. Finally, the last IP I really want to dive into is a personal one of mine, one that I have been really hoping for. It's been something that's been talked about. Of course, the one and only Gremlins. While not like a horror movie, I think this one could be really good in that sort of comedy style where it does uh, have some scares, but it's mostly lighthearted, something like Ghostbusters or Beetlejuice. Also, Gremlins has some pretty grotesque and gory scenes. I mean, it was one of the films that led to the creation of the PG-13 rating, so I think it could still bring that gore factor in a way that's not too offensive to the original source material. And like a house like Ghostbusters or Beetlejuice, you could use a lot of puppetry and animatronics to sort of bring these gremlins to life. And there's plenty of classic scenes to pull from the original 1984 movie. You have the kitchen massacre scene, you have the uh, caroler scene, you have the movie theater scene. You have plenty of moments to pull from and create this really fun atmosphere where you're sort of walking through the movie. And screw it, you could throw in some characters and scenes from the new batch if you wanted to really create an all around gremlins haunted house. House. Universal is no stranger to having gremlins in the park. I mean, they take up a good chunk of some of the gift shops. And now that Warner Brothers and Universal seem to be back on again, I think this could be a time where we could actually see a gremlins house happen, especially with the sort of rise in the comedy IP houses um, like Ghostbusters, like Beetlejuice. Um, so I think this could be the time we finally see gremlins, or at least I, I, I hope it is. Either way, 
this is probably the one I want the most, but this is probably the one that's least likely. I'm gonna give it a one uh, on the likely meter just because there's been no talk about this. No one speculated this. This has just been something that a lot of fans have been wanting uh, and Universal has been putting its stuff in the park. So we're like, hey, make it a Horror Nights house. But that's what I got. It's kind of a, a scrambled list so far. We don't have a lot of leeway as to the direction they're going to go with IPs. Are they going to go with newer stuff? Are they going to go with classic stuff? Are they going to do a 90s year? I know a lot of people have been speculating them doing like a 90s since they did the 80s before. Are they going to do uh, a doll uh, childhood toy themed year because of Chucky and possibly Megan? We don't know, but I want you to let me know what IP uh, of this list would you like to see the most? Obviously, mine is going to be Gremlins, but also I really would like Stranger Things, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Honestly, all of these IPs really sound fun. Um, Megan, I haven't gotten to see the movie yet, but I've heard only good things about that one. And also, what IP that wasn't on this list uh, would you like to see at Halloween Horror Nights? Let me know. Maybe that can bring some ideas to the table that I didn't really think about. Um, there's a couple I don't think we're going to see. Like, I don't think Scream is going to come this year. I just I, I just have a feeling. I, I know the rights after that have been very complicated, but I also think stuff like Five Nights at Freddy's uh, could appear at the event next year because the sort of tie-in value wouldn't really make sense this year. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, leave a like, subscribe for more HHN videos, history, stories, uh, speculation when the time comes, and uh, I'm out of here. But thank you all for watching again, and I will see you all next time. Stay spooky, my friends.